Hello everyone, Dr. Louis Arroyo is with me today. He's a researcher at the Ontario Veterinary College and was involved in a recent study on the growing number of ticks in southeastern Canada and the risk factors to horses. Welcome Dr. Arroyo and thank you for joining us today. Thank you Jackie, it's a pleasure to be here. So the big question is why are we seeing more ticks on our horses lately? So that's an interesting question. Um, I would say that in general, most of the concerns or the agreement among many of the scientists is that with global warming, there is um, more chance for ticks to migrate uh, or to expand. Also, some of the um, wildlife animals, their habitats, they are more around and they have more contact with farms or farmers and animals. And that might be one of the reasons. And we have a larger concentration of ticks along all the uh, provincial parks. And so uh, areas nearby where there is uh, horses nearby these parks, this usually where there will be more chances of contact, just the same as happened with humans and even with dogs, that there will be a higher risk of acquiring the ticks in these areas. What should horse owners do if they find a tick on their horse? Typically, um, we recommend uh, owners to groom the horses on a daily basis, and they should very carefully remove the tick and uh, put it in a jar or an alcohol uh, jar and then send it to the vet so, so somebody for identification to see what is one of the species that will be transmitting the Borrelia, which is the, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. It is important, however, not to... Um, to crush the tick or to um, twist it or apply uh, baby oil or petroleum, things like that, or, or a lighter, uh, because basically it's, some of the things may actually kill the tick in there or leave mouth parts in the, in the skin or regurgitate blood in the horse that it might be actually increasing the chances of transmitting the disease. It would be um, ideal to carefully remove it uh, without, you know, janking it or, or remove it too hard, just gently kind of like back and forth and then dislodge it from the skin. And then that's the best way to go about it. What about this e-tick app where you can take a picture and send it in? Do you have uh, uh, any information on that? Yes, people do that. I think that's very useful as well. If you have a good picture, you can you can do the the, the app. So how about some prevention tips? Yeah, there are many uh, potential prevention tips that they can consider. For example, if uh, the owners are in an area with high risk, daily application of repellents would be very much recommended. If they go in trails, not get off of the trail. And then if in the farm, trying to keep the grass low, uh, trying to keep bushy areas under control or not in contact with the animals, trim overhanging things, uh, you know, in the, in the, on the legs of course, like trim the legs if they're too hairy, things that you can easily see them. And then um, if you know that there is like a wildlife population, uh, obviously uh, prevent, you know, contact with those, of course, is difficult, but you know that they can be in this area. So another uh, important, it's not a prevention, but another important thing is to basically groom your horses daily in the, in the risk season and look for ticks, you know, actively every day. Because if, if the tick is removed shortly after being attached to the horse, the chances of, of transmitting the disease are lower. It needs certain time, like two days, in order to, to transmit the bacteria, I should say, not the disease. Um, so daily, um, daily checks, legs, head, neck, belly, tail, it is important to, to have groomed the horses in a daily basis. Or after a trail ride and things like that where uh, you know, uh, areas of high risk, as I mentioned before, nearby some of these provincial parts where we know there is a high population of, of, the, of the ticks that they will be carrying the bacteria. Thank you for sharing all that information, uh, Dr. Arroyo.